Hello and welcome inside Take to Take here. Patrick Talent, as always, alongside Nick Robinson, Luke Burrows. Uh, how are we doing? Good, Pat. Good intro there. Thank you. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, it's Thursday, February 4th. We are recording um, at 5 p.m. couple games tonight. Uh, some news in the last week. Uh, I say this every single time, but it feels like it's been a while. I don't know if you guys feel the same. Probably not. I just, I love recording with you guys. So, anyway. Aww. Uh, there's been uh, some news, some unfortunate news, and, and let's let's start with that because I think this was only a matter of time. Um, D'Angelo was Tony D'Angelo was put on waivers by the New York Rangers. Um, he cleared waivers, and every single day, more and more news comes out about this situation. He allegedly had an altercation with um, goaltender Alexander Gorgiev and Chris Kreider. Um, there were reports about his relationship with Keandre Miller, um, and just to sort of touch on a, a quote from Sportsnet here. Um, Saturday night, Rangers Penguins, 10 seconds before the winning goal is scored. Gorgiev and D'Angelo have a mix up, a miscommunication behind the net. Sidney Crosby gets in between them and the Rangers players who are already on the ice for a while. Noticeably exhausted, can't get off. Crosby scores. The Penguins win an OT. When they went off ice, Gorgiev is sitting disappointed like any competitive person. Um, D'Angelo walks by him, makes a sarcastic crack to him, and Gorgiev clocks him. They go at it and their teammates break it up. Later that night, the Rangers called D'Angelo um, or his agent and they say, that's the last straw. You're going on waivers tomorrow. And then at noon, he was put on waivers. Um, I didn't follow too much of the Tony D'Angelo situation. I knew about his presence on Twitter. I knew of him being a huge Trump guy, uh, just being super active, pretty ignorant about a lot of current issues uh, in the world. Um, were you guys surprised to hear that this happened? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but also no, uh, this is like for something like that, to ha like you hear about, you know, conflicts within teams before, but something so um, just so gross to happen right after. Like, it's just, it's absolutely no sportsmanship. And, and you'd think uh, to some degree, uh, everyone in the league is going to have some level of, of that to, to whatever, but the, the whole situation, I mean, for him himself, it's not surprising. And then I'm sure we're going to get into uh, an account on Twitter shortly. But um, no, I it's it's not surprising coming from him. Unfortunately, it's not surprising, Pat. I, I think what is surprising in this is that the Rangers and any NHL team really stepped up and did anything about it. But the other surprising part is that it really took this long for them to do something about it because we've talked before on the show, Pat and I um, back in June uh, amidst all the Dan Carcillo allegations um, towards the CHL, we talked about guys like Tony D'Angelo and how their presence online and what their outreach is can be pretty harmful um, in the modern day. We've talked about D'Angelo before. He is a questionable guy. And it was interesting for the Rangers really to note when um, President John Davidson and GM Jeff Gordon did discuss this, that they noted, you know, none of his conduct off the ice, like his social media presence, factored into this at all. So I think that's sort of the surprising part in all this. But at the same time, unsurprising, given, you know, sort of what we've talked about with hockey culture before. But I guess we'll see where it goes, because I think you're going to get into it, Pat, maybe there are some teams exploring the possibility of trading for D'Angelo now that he's cleared waivers. Yeah. That's the thing I wanted to touch on. There's a lot of videos of him uh, from Rangers socials, interviewing his players, kind of all cracking jokes. I know that's just only on the surface and you obviously there's more to that, but it seemed like he was well-liked by his teammates um, in Arizona. He seemed like everything was, everything was fine, but um, there are a lot of hockey players I would say a good chunk of maybe majority hockey players are fairly right wing. A lot of hockey players, someone like Seth Jones, uh, Bobby Orr, who even endorsed Trump. This is, this is a thing. And I think it's how much you advertise your support for Trump and how that reflects in your tweets. When you say stuff that's blatantly ignorant, that's blatantly racist. Um, and that it took this long for the Rangers to say something. I think that's a bad look on that organization. Um, I've never seen an NHL player so active on Twitter. Uh, NHL players, you know, some, some people embrace the spotlight. Some people embrace being active on social media and they, they market themselves in a way that's positive with D'Angelo. It was never positive. It was him honestly, just being a huge prick from day one. And um, while it did take long enough, um, it's unfortunate that it led to this. Um, but you touched on it, Nick. Um, there are teams interest. Apparently there's a lot of interest in, in Tony D'Angelo. I think I read Calgary was one of them because uh, they, they could use a little bit more help on defense. Um, 
whatever team gets him is going to face a lot of pushback. What do you guys think of this? And, and I've heard, I, I don't know, probably because I'm just on Canucks Twitter, but I've heard about a lot of theories about Vancouver being yep. involved. Yeah, he's a he's a good defenseman. Um, he proved that last year, but I personally don't think it's worth it. Uh, he's caused a lot of problems in New York, and they they just they they had to waive a guy who put up fifty points last year, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. I just I don't think uh, any team should want to get involved with that. It's it's a like I get it for for kind of looking into it because um, like I said, he's a good defenseman. But I think y- you've got to think about about sort of your team as a whole. Do you really want to bring that on board? And I would hope, at least in Vancouver's case, that they do not. But who knows? You know, if you're bringing in D'Angelo right now, you're undertaking what is potentially going to be like just a massive. Um, PR headache in him and it's an interesting test for NHL teams because I feel like if D'Angelo was just a third pairing guy or you know maybe like a seventh defenseman type player a tweener between the NHL and the AHL you know we're not even having a discussion on this he's gone from the NHL he's declared bad for the room and that's it but I think the fact that Tony D'Angelo has at least shown some on ice ability is weighing into this and, you know, even further, it illustrates that, say, T- Tony D'Angelo was the type of player that was, you know, challenging for the Norris every year or something like that. And this problematic socially and with his teammates, then, you know, it's hard to say that I'd have confidence in the NHL teams to do the right thing, which is push guys like Tony D'Angelo out. So I, I guess we'll see where the trading goes. But at least I'm hoping it's some sort of a cap dump. And then whoever just acquires him banishes him from the NHL level. Yeah. But I like we'll see where it goes because I'm not exactly confident in saying that's what's going to happen right now. So let's say a team and I'll Luke, I'll pose this to you. I'll put either of you um, as a hypothetical. If a team said to him, we're going to give you a chance. No Twitter, nothing. I know. I know he deactivated. He deactivated his account, account right? He deactivated his official account, but as yeah. we've seen now, people familiar yes. in the hockey Twitterverse, mm-hmm. we think we've nailed down Tony D'Angelo. Again. I'm pretty positive that's him. I just I but. I heard it isn't, but even if it, if it if he's trying to think it isn't him, he's doing a really bad job. If anyway. it's not him, someone's putting it on really well. Yeah, we saw the thread with with Mr. Mr. Booth, thread. but yeah, let me just put a hypothetical. If a team said, "Okay, nothing on Twitter." no comments, nothing political, nothing on Instagram. The slightest thing will get you kicked off the team, waved, bought out, whatever you want to say. If that was the case and Jim Benning, for example, set that as this is what, this is what you have. You have to go to this. um, I don't know, show your support for for this group or whatever, instead of being a huge prick. If those outline uh, guidelines were laid out for him, would that justify signing him? Because I still don't think it would. No. It's, a really, it's a dangerous game to play because this is the thing. Tony D'Angelo is a really good hockey player. He is an offensive defenseman who has a lot of skill. And if this isn't if, if this isn't a, a, a political thing, there would be a lot of demand for Tony D'Angelo. So if a GM were to lay those out, say, this is what you have to do, and we will use your services, but the moment you do anything out of line, you're gone. Is that okay for GMs to do? What do you guys think? No, I don't. I I mean, no, it's, I don't think it's okay for GMs to do, but that's not the point why I don't think it should happen. I don't think GMs should want to do that, should want to have someone like that on their team where they have to do that. Um, But I mean, to answer that question, no, I don't, I don't think GMs should be laying down those ground rules for players. I know this is a very specific case and I mean, something like this hasn't, really happened before but no it's a it's a two-parter gms shouldn't want to have to do that and gms shouldn't be able to do that i think okay yeah no i i can't see why even after all that you'd go through the headache of trying to acquire a player like this you know it's not even about the politics in this case or the fact that he's you know getting into tussles with teammates this is the same player who in junior was suspended for using a racial slur um, against a teammate And you see now all these years later, his behavior really hasn't deferred much from that. And I don't doubt that a lot of that 
racism that was obviously in him at that time is probably still in him to the day. Yeah. You just pretty much got a glance at the guy's social media to see yeah. that. So I, again, it's not worth it. Even if you're laying down these sort of guidelines, because obviously Tony D'Angelo is just not a good person, not somebody that should be in the NHL. No. So I, I think I'm going to agree with agreement with you guys there. Um, it shouldn't have taken for this point for people to think, well, maybe if we change this, maybe if he give him this opportunity, uh, being in the NHL is an opportunity and behave in the way he did um, is enough to, sh- to say he, he blew it in, in just being ignorant and being, um, you know, blatantly racist and, and discriminatory. I think that did it for him. And um, I would imagine his, his career um, would be over. I read that Arizona might potentially have interest. This was just a, something I saw on Twitter. Imagine the PR, imagine the response they'd get after the uh, Mitchell Miller incident. Yeah. And everything else, Chica. Anyway, let's uh, well, hold on. What, what do you guys think, uh, Nick? You said it. What What would you think if, um, and I'll go back to Vancouver. If Benning trades Erickson for D'Angelo, and then just banishes D'Angelo to the deepest hole he can find, like how would how would you perceive bought, or that? just bought him out or something like that? Again, I sure, think yeah, like, at that point you're just exchanging contracts and all that i'd have no problem on the business end of it but um if the rangers aren't able to deal his contract to wear something like that and they refuse to play him either in their american league affiliate or in the nhl level again i don't necessarily feel bad for them because they know the person that they're dealing with they signed him to this deal back just this summer so i don't feel necessarily any pity for the rangers on that front but if somebody else were to come ahead and trade for that contract and then either just say, Hey, we're just pretty much taking salary back at this point. We don't plan yeah. to play you force him to it, sit out or loan him to somewhere in Europe or something like that. I don't theoretically have a problem with that. Yeah. I think if you make it very clear that that's the intention, I, yeah, I agree. I think yeah, that would absolutely. be a, a smart, I think, move, I think but... he'll link up in the, he'll go to Europe with Slava yeah. Voinov and all those other. Yeah, he's uh, got to go to the KHL. Decks. Like, I think yeah. that's the only place that'll accept him. At this yeah, point. we saw it with uh, Brendan Leipzig after those leaked uh, text messages as well. Anyway, it's an unfortunate situation, and you feel for Andre Miller. Um, there, oh, I forgot to mention. Oh, uh, that... Laura, Lauren Kelly put out how, you know, NHL players with their first NHL goal, that's been a tradition forever. Um, and he allegedly took the game, the, the puck that Andre Miller scored. Really unfortunate. This is just like, it's hey, I know stuff. Elliot Friedman had spoken on that, or he didn't touch on that specifically, but said there is some untrue stuff floating around. But from what we know, that's been usually where there's smoke, there's fire, I would like to say. So we don't yeah. know for sure if that happened. If, but the fact that there's no picture of Keandre Miller yet with his first NHL goal. Is puck, there not? That's, has- no, there's not. Okay. And that's pretty... Um, that's pretty sketchy to me if that yeah, is true that's that's like that's just bullying that's just so that's 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 blatant harassment and that's the thing is someone said oh well i didn't see capo caco with it and then lauren kelly responded with capo caco so um anyway let's let's move on that's really unfortunate but let's talk about some other players being shopped who aren't um absolute clowns <laughs> um, looking at uh, a couple defensemen and a forward we'll start with um two similar defensemen actually uh in terms of their roles that's travis dermott on the Toronto Maple Leafs and Victor Mete. Um, I think Dermott re-signed relatively cheap contract this off season. I can't remember the exact uh, hit or term, um, but he is apparently being shopped along with uh, Victor Mete in Montreal. I don't know about you guys. I don't have too much to say about Travis Dermott. I assume they would just want to give him an opportunity to play anywhere else. Um, do you know his contract off the top of your head? I do not. Open one of these. Look, uh, it's it. one. It's one year. I think it's about eight hundred k for Dermot. Like it's a. It's pretty much league minimum. Yes. So exactly. Yeah. Um. And then Victor Mete, we'll, we'll touch on, and we can kind of look at where these players fit. But for Victor Mete, it was reported during I think the first game against Calgary that he had asked for a trade, and then ten minutes later, Pierre LeBrun tweets again. Bergevin via text messages said, "No, this didn't happen." And then next media availability. People are talking to Mete and he's saying, I'd rather not talk about it. So there's some miscommunication there. Uh, his agent, I think is Darren Ferris. Um, either he did or he didn't. I think Victor Mete wants an opportunity to play. I'm assuming in some communication with Mark Bergevin, they said, okay, Victor Mete wants to play hockey. I don't know if it was uh, explicitly requesting a trade out of Montreal, but um, 
where do you think what teams and I'm actually looking at both your teams right now um, could use could value the services of Dermot and Mete? Do you think the Sens or Canucks are in a, are in a place to make those moves? Uh, yes. I'm not sure about the Sens are because they've traded away so many like mid round <laughs> picks and stuff already. Right. But one team that sticks out to me for both of them is Pittsburgh because they are getting absolutely ravaged on defense right now, whether it's COVID or injuries. The only guy left from their opening night defense is Cody CC. So something tells me there's definitely going to be a move or two coming for Pittsburgh. I can see them definitely being in on both these guys. And I know it was reported when Jim Rutherford stepped down that Pittsburgh was close to acquiring another defenseman. I'm going to go ahead and guess that was probably Dermot, but I, I, can't help but feel Travis Dermott eventually ends up in Pittsburgh either way. I, and I'll, and I'll speak to Vancouver specifically because defense is a thing um, for that team. I, I don't know about Dermott. Um, I'm not sure I'd want to take, take that chance, especially, I mean, I was going to say, especially because his contract's expiring, but uh, I, if, if it's, if they re-sign him to what that was, I wouldn't have a huge issue with that. Um, I don't mind Mete and I, I don't, I can't say I've really paid much attention to him, but just he, he's younger. Um, I would, I'd be more willing to take a shot with, uh, with someone that isn't, I mean, not to say Dermot's old, but someone that's not as old uh, and his contract's expiring as well. So I don't know. We'll see, because I think it's players like that, that Vancouver should be looking into whether they will. Uh, I, I, doubt it because i think benning has his mind elsewhere i couldn't tell you where but um i i I do like i do like the young uh young defensemen that haven't proved themselves that i don't know vancouver could take a chance on yeah and victor look victor mate is a really weird player in montreal and i definitely think habs fans are split on him um He's someone that he was a later round pick i think in the second or third round i honestly don't remember but he stepped in and overall Okay, there we go. Um, had had a really good uh, OHL career. Um, he's a puck mover. He's smaller, and his underlying metrics are really good. Uh, Jay Fresh, um, all these people we cite, his 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 maps are really good. I'm sure Nick can touch on how how strong his heat maps are. Uh, he's a really good third pairing defenseman who maybe has second pair upside in the right system. I don't see that in Montreal. Uh, They've clearly identified the way they want to play, the way they want to defend. Uh, while I've criticized it in the past, it's working so far this season with Edmondson and Sherrod, uh, Weber, Petrie. And then you have Romanov and Kulak uh, evening out the bottom four. And there's, just, there's not really room for him. Um, I just think the thing with Victor Mete is you have to know what you what your expectations are. Habs fans have these unrealistic expectations that he's this first pair defenseman. He's not. He's a really good third pairing defenseman who can move the puck. Um, Would you up? take... Um... Because I, I mean, you could also put Vertan into this list of players you have here. Um, he's off to a horrible start. Would you take Vertan in for Mete one for one? Um, if we're being honest, I don't think Montreal needs much help up front. But no, like it, it would be fine. And, and I guess you could argue that's kind of a fair trade. Both teams are well. One team is getting what they need, and given I don't even know what Mete's value can, what Mete's value well, is. I was, yeah, I was thinking so, it's somewhere in like a second or third, maybe not even I a second, probably a third. Vertanen obviously is the better player right now. Yes. Um, but I'm just looking at, I think, like I said, Vancouver should be looking at defensemen like this. Um, they get a bit of cap relief. I, and Vertan is not playing. And, and yeah, well, Mont- we, yeah, we Montreal would have Vertan to send out, yeah. you have to move a Byron or an Armia because they're right up against the cap. But, um, yeah. Yeah, it's. I don't know if I'd want Vertanen just as a person and a player. I find him irritating. It's kind of mean, Pat. Well, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's interesting to see though because um, now you have another one, Sam Bennett, who is apparently. I also saw a tweet from some verified account like an hour ago that said Mete was traded for Sam Bennett. Obviously, it's not true, but um, anyway, that's a strange one. I don't yeah. see the fit there at all. No, no, neither do I. Um, Sam Bennett's on the market, and Sam Bennett was drafted fourth overall in the 2014 draft uh william nylander was picked eighth uh fun fact but he's apparently Vertanen rep- sixth Vertanen six pasternak like 23rd or something was that right Somewhere. yeah pasternak was like late 20s <laughs> yeah anyway so apparently sam bennett wants out he scratched today uh pierre lebrun said that it wasn't related to trade but it's probably related to a trade 
if not tonight, probably in the near future. And at least I would say a week max. Um, this is weird. And I never really understood why players like that, who clearly don't have a defined role are requesting trades from teams that are fairly hot, like Calgary, no pun intended. But do you guys think, um, who do you think uh, would value Sam Bennett's services? And once again, I'm looking at both teams here because he's a bottom six forward as of right now, because he's not getting playing time in the top six. Uh, Luke, Vancouver's very top heavy. Do you think the Canucks would look for Sam Bennett? Well, so th- this off season's, um, like this summer is going to be really interesting for Vancouver, um, especially I think in their forward core because and not like not just considering like Pedersen or Hughes, but um, like you've got Sutter coming up, and that is kind of the first of many, many, many contracts that I'm hoping to see Vancouver get rid of. I've just recent and Pearson as well, uh, not as one that I want to get rid of, but he's also coming up. Right. Um, but Sutter, I I think you know he's right now he's generally playing third line center. Um, I, I, I don't have any proposal on how Vancouver acquires Bennett, but I, I don't mind the kind of player he is. And the, I'm assuming, you know, if they, if they had him, he'd probably move into that third, maybe start on the fourth line center. And I'm fine with that. I mean, looking at how much he's getting paid now, his contracts also up this year, but, um, he's going to get paid a heck of a lot less than someone like Sutter. So I, I don't hate it. But okay. yeah, Bennett's an interesting player. I think he's definitely one who, and it's the typical case of his perceived value is a lot higher than his actual on ice value. He's a weird player. I'm not sure exactly what his strengths are. I know Calgary's played him in the three C role pretty exclusively now for the past few years. And Calgary's been a, a solid team. He's had a couple of good seasons, but I think he's just really fallen off and just based on his draft pedigree still and the fact that he is kind of still on the younger side, although he's not really getting away with that anymore, it's going to at least ensure Calgary gets a higher end draft pick, not a first, but maybe something like a second. I'm looking maybe for one of the playoff contenders to go out and get him. I know Boston probably still needs to add a forward at some point. That's one I could see. There's probably a couple of teams out West too that would still be interested in the guy like Sam Bennett, but I can't really see anybody else in the Canadian division taking a stab at him. I just don't think everybody can find a fit for him because everybody's so deep at forward in the uh, North division. So I can't really see the fit anywhere there, but I'm sure someone in the United States will take a swing on him. Yeah. That's the thing I wanted to talk about also was how many big ish names are going to be moved around within the Canadian division. I saw someone, I think it was Grant McKegg propose a Philip Deneau to Calgary and some sort of deal for Sam Bennett. First of all, I don't think Montreal would be willing to move their, you know, best defensive center uh, to a team they're going to be playing six more times. It also doesn't make for, make sense for either team. If you have Monaghan and Lindholm, Deneau's going to bump who down? Probably neither of them. Uh, Sam Bennett doesn't fit in Montreal. But I, you made a good point, Nick. I, I think Boston's a really good fit. Maybe even Pittsburgh because it's not like you're getting a premium rental. You're getting something that you could probably give up a couple later picks, not a first rounder, not your top prospect. Um, But again, Bennett does have that perceived value fourth overall in 2014. He was really good in Kingston um, and watching him. He has, you know, flashes of brilliance. He does something cool, but nothing really uh, consistent in his play. But um, we'll see with that. I I still think Vancouver might be a decent fit. I just, again, it's if Calgary is willing to trade with a team, they're going to keep playing. Um, Anyway, speaking of Vancouver, by the way, uh, Jalen Shatfield's pretty good. I didn't realize um, I saw his, his heat maps there Canucks five on five defense with him and without him. He's, he's got some, I know it's small sample size, but he's not bad. What I didn't even know who he was until their first game against Vancouver. And he's, I mean, he's, yeah, he's not like you said, he's not playing much, but, and I, I don't look at uh, heat maps like you guys do, but I haven't, I haven't minded him out there. Um, him and Zach McEwen. Yeah. I, I really like, I, I really like their style of play, but uh, yeah. they they're kind of struggling to, to round it out with actually producing, but that's fine. Um, yeah. Chatfield has been in the system for a while and mm-hmm. he's kind of always been right there. Yeah. Um, similar to McEwen, actually both like they're all, oops, they're always kind of right there. Um, McEwen's kind of taken that next step, but yeah, I mean, it kind of looks like Chatfield might be making that jump this year, especially with them. Um, yeah. I don't know the way the lineup's shaping up, but that's uh, that's nice of you to say, Pat. I'll pass that along. No problem. Um, 
a player we've not or a team i think we only talked about once they made the big trade was uh winnipeg jets and uh paul maurice made a uh rather intense comment towards one of the Winnipeg Jets reporters. Uh, intense, hilarious. There's, yes. there's a in, lot of words for that in, comment. Uh, incorrect, uh, if we want to get into that. But anyway, uh, basically, I think there was uh, a columnist here or there who who said, who, who criticized Blake Wheeler. And uh, he, uh, Paul Maurice responded, said he's got exp- expletive 11 points in 10 games um, with questions on Blake Wheeler if he's lost a step, uh, Paul Maurice comes to the defense of his captain and ris- rips um, hockey analytics, explaining he doesn't tell the whole story. We all three of us would agree, even the most diehard analytics player would, person would say, no, it does not tell the whole story. But this is not like Blake Wheeler has not been good. He has the points, but he has not been good. He, and, he's got 11 points in 10 games. Two of those points are at even strength. Yes, that's he, that's the key thing with Wheeler. And, and he's been on for, I think it was like 70 or 80% of the goals against. He's not playing good defensively. And I love this response from Mike Johnson for those who, who may not be seeing the visual. Uh, like and respect Mo um, and appreciate his defense of the captain. There's a room for nuance if this conversation in this conversation. Uh, but what if we just called analytics information instead and suggested some of the info showed Wheeler was struggling defensively? Doesn't sound so inflammatory. Uh, nothing but... Nothing but wins from I, from Mike Johnson. Yeah, I um, that's an interesting comment. Um, I've never really heard people discuss the actual because calling it analytics is and and that's maybe a discussion we should have. That's an interesting concept because I mean, w- w- like why why is it called analytics? It's just it's it seems like an unnecessary um designation for right. like he said information that it's just information um and and i get it like analytics are a thing and basically well it's just become sport. such an inflammatory term right yeah, i, like I think we'd have no problem calling it analytics if everybody if, unanimously yeah. liked analytics but yeah. it's become such just a hate word for a lot of traditional hockey people like paul maurice um and i'm sure like i think he came out and said today even like they do it winnipeg has five full-time analytics people they do use this information and stuff like that, but I, I, you know, I respect him coming out and trying to defend Blake Wheeler. You know, that is the captain of his team. That's the leader of his room, all that. That's fine. But, you know, just the constant criticism of analytics and just designating them all um, horse bleep as he put it. Yeah. I'm not sure how fair that is. Yeah. It doesn't like come to the, come to the defense of your captain say, well, he has 10 points, 11 games. Sure. But is it really advanced analytics when you can just look at all the numbers and say, hey, he's been outscored? Yeah, see, I, I understood what those stats were. So I don't think they're analytics. I, I've i come to realize I don't understand advanced analytics, but I understood what that meant. It's like, and we don't have to, we've had this discussion a million times. It's like people hear Corsi, it's a somewhat foreign word. It's, it's literally plus minus for shot attempts. It just, it just tells you, are you shooting more, attempting to shoot more, or are you... Uh, are more are more shot attempts being happening towards you when uh, when you're on the ice? It's really not that complicated, and I think if if NHL coaches and GMs were a little bit more, um, if they embraced analytics uh, with an open mind, we might not have these discussions. I just think it's silly because it, it shows that Paul Maurice doesn't really know what analytics are. If the fact is he's been outscored, the fact is he's not playing well defensively, but he's also playing well enough to put up points. But again, he's not going to rip on his captain. I just thought it was funny. He said, you're beacon my captain, man. And he got upset. But anyway, enough of that. Unless, Nick, you have anything else you wanted to touch on the... Uh, the no, I'm, I'm pretty good with yeah. Maurice. I, you know, I respect his opinion and all that, but I, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it either. Anyway, um, let's... Uh, we put this in here just for fun. Because uh, before the show, I made a joke about one of Luke's takes. And then we just decided to have it. Let's, let's dunk on each other. Yeah, you know what, Luke? Luke, we'll give you, we'll give you the option right now retract your statement on josh anderson's contract you have you have let's, the opportunity let's remember <laughs> what he said and in two different episodes so when he signed luke said this is a terrible contract and i refuse to see otherwise you can make that argument but in our pre in our that's a fine argument because a lot of people have that a lot of people share that feeling in our uh first show before the season we had a who's going to be a big disappointment segment and your first pick well, it was hate to do this to you, Pat, but I think it's going to be Josh Anderson. And your reason was because he signed a bad contract. Yeah. That, okay. Despite, despite knowing he's healthy, despite the 20 goal seasons and 
40, 50 points before you think you thought he was going to be a disappointment because he signed a bad contract. And um, then I said, okay, well, yeah. what's Sorry, a disappointment? Yeah, what's a disappointment? Uh, how many points? How many goals? I said, will he score 10 goals? You said, I think you said, no, you said he might score 10 goals. Maybe he's not going to score a lot of goals. He's not going to anyway. He has two, had two against the Canucks the other night. He has six goals in 10 games. Um, now's the chance to retract your statement. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just, I'll look past the fact I was just viciously attacked on our radio show. That's fine. <laughs> I, the core of what I was saying all those times and the, I will say the biggest disappointment, Josh Anderson. Yeah. That, that's, I'm, I'm, that's personal. That's personal. It, D- doubling yeah. down on it was interesting. Might, might've been a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a, never mind your a thousand shots. Friendly of banter. But, um, yeah. I stand by, I think it was a dangerous contract to sign. It on, was. But, I, I, I um, also, I did agree. That. I won't excuse myself here. So isn't that, that was what I was very dangerous? I still don't think he probably had to sign him to that. But so I, my that argument, my argument for that might have morphed into I don't think he's a good player. Uh, it and did. It so clearly did. Because so, I agree. I agree with both of you. This is a dangerous. This contract is risky. Okay. But, so, but you maybe, you took a bad contract into he must be a bad player, <laughs> despite the twenty seven goals he had despite his playoff so, success. So I'd, I'd like to go back. I mean, I think it was in October when that all happened. I'd like to listen to my very f- initial comments on that. I remember. I remember. <laughs> Don't worry. I think... The streets never um, forget. <laughs> I, that, that was the core of my argument, was that that was a dumb contract for yeah. Montreal to sign him to. Uh, and it might have got a bit out of hand. It might have got a bit um, personal uh, that... I didn't yeah. think Josh Anderson was a good player. I, I, to be honest, I never really, I was pretty neutral on Josh Anderson prior to October of this year. Can't say I really cared too much about his, um, his uh, hockey playing ability. So I, I will concede that it might've, I might've kind of blown that out of proportion. Uh, do I regret some of the comments I made? No. Because hey, I, in Luke's defense, there there are now many years left on this thing, so I guess we'll see where it goes. Yeah, yeah, Luke, that's another better, thing. There's, there's lots that of time term, for him to get injured, and you can be right. That term, yeah. If he, better. if he, how many goals does he have? Ten, right? He has six goals in ten games. Oh, okay. So he could. Okay, so I'm not worried. That could yeah, still happen. He, he could stop at ten. No, no Luke. Okay. There's, he could stop there's at plenty six, of time really, for him but... to get really injured and then you can feel bad but at least feel good because your your take was correct but never mind the a thousand remarks about cock L- L- luke we'll let show. you dunk on me now because uh i know you like to dunk on this one and you actually <sighs> posted this on your personal instagram because <laughs> I, 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 I don't think that was there that day right i wasn't yeah, there he wasn't. No. it was just you and yeah. i and i remember you put this on your personal instagram <laughs> and you, you made sure to bring it up at least monthly after that and why don't you go ahead? How many? How how good was Miro Heiskanen last year? Was he was he that good? Um, I, and let's not talk about playoffs because I know both him and Klingberg kind of broke through the playoffs. But um, why would we not talk about the playoffs? Well, because playoffs aren't in consideration when you're talking about Norris. Oh yeah, IMO. true. true. Um, I didn't know we were talking Norris here. Well, so yeah, so Nick's take was, and this would have been October of 2019. Feels like a decade ago. Uh, Nick's take was um, Miro Heiskanen will win the Norris Trophy. I think I think Pat and I, or Pat, you weren't there. I think I chose someone really reasonable. I might have chose who won Yossi. Except nothing but purple. I might have chose Yossi. Who knows? Uh, Miro Heiskanen, and I mean these again. Yeah, these are just points. Um, th- it's not terrible. Thirty-five points in sixty-eight games. Uh, I can't speak to his analytics on his defensive game uh, i'm sure you guys They're can good. It, it's good but the uh the the core of this was that miro heiskin was nowhere near uh no yeah he might have been knocking on the door but he was he was not in the norris discussion i don't think and uh i, and Nick I don't think just, he got a vote did he i don't think so oh you don't i don't remember okay that. well i i would have expected more than that but just uh today about an hour ago nick said uh he's playing really well this year so that's that's good i'm he might have just been off by a year so well i I almost reverse nailed this one because i think if dallas won the stanley cup he would have been a huge shout for the con smythe so i almost 
very almost very nearly was he your, i remember we made con smythe picks at one point was he your con smythe pick i forget when that was i don't i don't know what stage i don't think he was my so con smythe pick check, check i think i think we did those yeah. before the playoffs was it and yeah, uh it I, I don't think i doubled down on the heiskanen because <laughs> that would have been the equivalent of the josh anderson double down but i i stick by thinking miro heiskanen is you know probably the top uh, young defenseman in the NHL right now with all due respect to Quinn Hughes, Kel McCarr and the like, you know, I may have been a year off because he looks extraordinary this year. And Dallas also looks really good. So I guess time will tell when Miro Heiskanen wins an Norris. Cause I think he's going to at some point, but I, I guess I overshot it. That's um, last year. That's also the age thing is, you know, we talked about in our season preview, maybe this is the year the Norris goes younger. Maybe, It'll be a Cal McCarr, a Charlie McAvoy. Maybe it won't be a Petrangelo, a Weber, uh, one of I those older that's guys. Be this year. Yeah, well, then th- this think. makes sense. I think um, unless Jeff Petrie just keeps up his pace, he might win the Norris. But yeah, anyway, he is really good. Justin Hall, maybe. All right, can, can we? Can okay, we... wait. <laughs> okay, now Nick, Nick, I will get. Now you can dunk on me. Uh, I dunked on Luke. This isn't Luke dunked on you. Can I just? Yeah, say... th- th- this isn't no. the same level of dunking that Luke and I got because, because it's... Y- you get to enjoy this dunk. Because well, I, you're getting dunked on because your team is good now. It's like, I've yeah. definitely th- there has to be some takes down in the in the archives of something I've said I'm that sure is worse. Yeah, we, we threw this segment together. We threw most of the show together really last minute. But Patrick, uh, if you go back and listen to maybe the first ten to fifteen episodes of Take to Take, <laughs> you'll hear about a weekly five minute segment in which Patrick Talon rips into the Montreal Canadiens, who he so dearly loves, and Mr. Mark Bergevin. Uh, mostly citing what is the plan what is the plan what is the plan well all of a sudden mr mark bergevin has a plan and the montreal canadians find themselves atop the north division just over 10 games in patrick uh you know a bit of a, a dunk you like to enjoy like i said here but you know yeah i feel so it. bad for are, you, are you convinced of the plan now uh let me say i don't at the time i stand by what i said because all of the moves that he made were never ever ever indicative of a clear plan he never said who he was building around he never identified when he wanted to win the bar was low the bar was win a playoff round you know lateral moves what seemed like lateral moves at the time it never really seemed to make sense there was also a period of time when he was just notorious for adding washed up players such as alish hemsky uh out of ottawa such as alexander semen uh not paying not playing the youth at the time acquiring Steve Ott, Andreas Martinson, uh, Dwight King, and people were thinking, okay, Rips. what is actually happening? Yeah. And I didn't know what was going to happen this offseason. I, I was calling for Tatar and Petrie to be sold because I, I thought Montreal was going to go into another year of just kind of middling about. And it, it's clear that there is a plan to win the cup. He finally said the plans to win the cup. Um, he surrounded the centers with good wingers and solidified the defense. So, um, I, at the time, I don't take back what I said because I think it made sense, and a lot of sort of a lot of Habs fans shared that shared that sentiment. But um, it's better now. It is a, it's an enjoyable dunk, um, and, I, and I'm glad he's you th- made the effort. Do you think there was a plan, or do you think he just kind of got lucky with how it turned out this what year? Do you, do you, well, do you okay, think but- this is kind of what he meant to do, or do you think he has a lot of stuff coming together that he couldn't have seen? Oh, I think I think it's both. I don't think you can look at you know when Montreal went on the run in 2014. He said that was a transition year and they were going to build to get better, you know, 2015 and 2016, and they never really did. And then, you know, I wouldn't have imagined, you know, turning Alex Galchenyuk into Josh Anderson. Like when Galchenyuk was traded for Domi, there was not a single Habs fan who thought that Montreal won the trade because Domi had hey, like 12 you. goals, including myself. I, I will like that. I no, So many people were Is off. Is that your bad take? Did we finally expose your bad take? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. The Subban trade I, I thought was a disaster because Subban went on to do amazing things and then he's fallen off. It's it's weird. Um, you know, Drew I and Sergachev I didn't like because at the time Sergachev filled the need, but I've always I've always admired Drew. I don't know. We'll see. Um I'm happy I'm happy with the honest product. I'm happy with with the team Bergevin has assembled. But um anyway, let's well, before uh, before we moved on move on from this segment, I do have to say Pat Patrick has made a stupider take than that. We just haven't found it yet. So we'll update <laughs> when that is on its yeah. way. One take we were definitely all not wrong about, and it sort of relates goes hand in hand with what we've all been saying. Uh 
you know, when we talked about in the fall about the possibility of Canadian division, how fun that would be. We've, we've not been wrong so far. We've no, definitely been right there. You, have, Nick, you called that before I'd heard about it anywhere. You, you said, yeah. you talked about that like a while before, I think, cause I think, was it McPhee or someone in the Vegas organization said something? And that's the first time we like heard it from a real source. I, I, remember, I think we talked about it before that. Yeah. Yeah. You had said it long before I'd heard it from anyone else. And I remember thinking yeah, that because really I cool just idea. thought it would make sense with, uh, you know, sort of what the, with the um, yeah. other sports have done. I just thought with the borders, it would have made sense yeah. at the time. And look at that. It's been fun. Anyways, yeah, n- next episode, we'll do one where we see how right we were about everything Um, (laughs) that'll be a fun one but no it'll be a short one canadian division (laughs) it's it's still uh it's still yeah that'll be a short one um it's still rolling uh i don't want to embarrass luke too much on the show but again montreal vancouver two games uh three goals for toffoli undressed jordy ben uh i thought demko looked pretty good yeah no it's always good to let in five goals but um or four anyway enough about that we've uh i guess this is just a one-way conversation luke doesn't want to talk about the canucks but let's talk about the games tonight what the canucks tonight uh, yeah the canucks play tonight the habs play tonight the sense play tonight the habs play the sense <sighs> i'm gonna be honest with you you're nervous fun. i, I think am you're nervous i am nervous it is fun to beat up on the canucks but habs fans have this confidence level that is like no other and I haven't seen it, and I think they need to relax a little bit because this is the same team that got swept by the Detroit Red, the Red Wings and that Detroit won 25% of their games against Montreal last year. Um, Montreal... How many games was that? Four. Four. The, <laughs> the Red Wings swept swept Montreal, and I, I am worried about the Sens. I'm worried they're going to play how they played Toronto in game one and two, and I have a feeling it'll be closer, and... I, I'm I'm gen- now you have Eric Brandstrom and he's going to score his goal against the Habs tonight. You can just guarantee it. Um, the the Sens have finally iced a lineup that is. It, it's the best than, lineup they have iced yeah. all season, and you know what? And it still has a lot of things that um, can be changed. I tweeted about it. Um, there's a lot of mixing matching they still have left to do, but it's a start. And a lot of the things I've spent the past two weeks criticizing on the Sens suddenly are looking a lot better next week, but. I guess we'll see what happens tonight. Um, you know, what are your predictions? Well, I'll tell you that they're not going to get anywhere if Murray and Hogberg are continuing to play. You know, they've got two games against Montreal now. And if the goaltending continues the way it is, it's I think the team save percentage is like 850 now or something. You can't have that because if they continue to have that, then Montreal is going to steamroll them. And this isn't going to be a very fun two games. Ottawa has not won in nine games now. It feels a lot longer than that unbelievably i'm sort of ready for 10 months of no hockey again but it'll be interesting ottawa has a knack of playing up two teams especially montreal and toronto it seems uh, kachuk has a good record um against montreal so does shabbat does. too so yeah. i guess it, i guess we'll see ottawa's got to get good goaltending it's hard to make a prediction on the sense because so much is relying on the goaltending right now defense looking a little bit better i'm happy yep. coburn and brown are on the way out brandstrom should add another element of excitement and um as the three of us discussed with Matt Mallard on the four man advantage, uh, Artem Zub is in the lineup and he is a top yeah. four defenseman tonight. So I guess we'll see what that's like. And he is but a human as well. He, he is, is a real. real. He is yeah. real. Artem Zub is a real guy. And um, two, two of the games, two of the three or four that Montreal and Ottawa played last year went to OT. Ottawa took one, Montreal took the other. I'm worried. And uh, Montreal, if it, I, I swear to God, man, I'm going to undo, I'm going to have the what is the plan take if montreal loses to ottawa <laughs> but anyway just kidding um luke vancouver is in toronto for three nights in a row not in a row but like three yeah, three, three games, games in a row three what what are your expectations i i live with a leafs fan uh weirdly enough <sighs> so and, do I. and yep and he thinks he's worried he thinks it would be very on brand of the leafs to blow it and lose to the canucks i i think um, six points in three games i can see it i i don't know you, it's pretty so good. Who do you, so, the Leafs kind of suck. What, what is your series uh, prediction for this? My serious series prediction. Um, I, I, I'll be happy if I'll be happy if Vancouver comes away with three points. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, I'd be happier if they came away with six, but 
who knows? I, I think um, I like if it was any other team that was like the same caliber as the Leafs, I wouldn't even care because I know they're going to lose. But because the Leafs are the Leafs, I could totally see Vancouver I, winning. I, so are the games between them usually pretty close? I can't really remember looking at last season. Toronto this is the first won, time they're meeting, right? Yeah. Toronto won both last year. Right. Um, By a significant margin or was it close? Yeah. Uh, I just yeah, remember I, a couple not, of years of ago or on Hockey Night in Canada, they were hyping Matthews versus Besser up as some great American matchup. I'm not sure how accurate that one has become in the years since. Yeah, but no. Either way, there's Patterson. some good young players on the ice tonight. I think Pedersen, um, he, he looks like he's playing a bit better. With yeah, a bit he's coming confidence. around. Yeah, he's getting there. Yeah, but we'll kind see. Of, kind of. Fuck drop um, in an hour, 50 minutes. Yep, that's uh, it is about 6.09 uh here nice thursday nice um on uh take to take so lots of fun games tonight can't wait to uh look back at the the series that happened and, and dunk on us some more look at our incorrect takes but this is just about... and i may not be friends next week so we'll, we'll see. oh there's a pretty good chance one of us has fallen ill and will not be on the show but uh <laughs> montreal will play their first afternoon game saturday 1 p.m that's the start time for that um yeah should be good loving the canadian division it as as much as it sucks to not have teams travel and having no fans, I think having the Canadian division is the best outcome given the circumstance. It's been a ton of fun. This could be the most entertaining year of hockey that we've had in our lifetime. I know I've had the most fun watching the Canadian division. I'm sure you guys have as well, but I, that's just going to do it. I've not had that much fun, but. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Totally forgot. Anyway. Um, also, actually for the, for the Sens game tonight, watch out for Victor Finley, a RU sport media graduate. I met him a couple of years ago. I think in a France game, uh, he's worked really, really hard to to get to this point, and he'll be calling the game on TSN five. So anyone who's tuning in should definitely check out to that. Um, yes. Good luck, Victor. Yes, good luck, Victor. Um, that's going to do it for us here. At take to take. We will see you next Thursday for our next episode. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Take care.